No spaghetti. Ready, bitch. Hello, welcome to Node Spaghetti. My name is Joseph, and today I have the first video in a series called Riggy Bits. Like the name suggests, this series will focus on specific reusable rigging components that can be added to any rig. In this video, I will cover the theory behind the rig and one potential implementation, and in the next video I will show a step-by-step -step guide on how to create it. Theory this video is a tip for improving the deformation of bending joints. Joints in a computer program aren't really joints. There's no blocky bones, no meaty muscles, or floppy fats. There's only data. And all the data really represents is a point in space. The mesh doesn't have any fleshy bits or anything like that. It's just a surface with no thickness nor interior. So when the joint bends, there's nothing to prevent the mesh from intersecting with itself, and consequentially causing problems for everyone. Now on a real person, there's fat and skin and muscle in the way, and they form creases because they simply can't intersect and the skin holds them in place. Today we're going to look at one way to prevent the ugly self-intersection that results from these infinitesimally small joints. That is, to give the joints some volume. In order to simulate a pivot having volume, we're actually going to use a separate pivot for the front and the back of the joint. I like to call this a hinge joint. In the simplest case, there is only one bone for the thigh and shin, and the resulting deformation is just awful. One possible remedy is to use corrective shape keys. However, this is tedious to set up, and it still doesn't look very good. Now on the right, we can see the result of this riggy bit and a bit of fiddling. Much, much better deformation. Now let's take a look at this specific implementation and why it works. Implementation. Now if we take a look at the rig in its entirety, it seems so complicated. But it's actually not all that complicated if you just break it down. We have one control that the animator is going to use. And as you can see, it'll even hyperextend the leg beyond what a human can normally do. In addition, I've made it so that it can pivot and twist beyond what a human is capable of. And the way we put this works is we have a master rotation bone, which controls the rotation of the knee. And when the rig is in FK mode, it simply copies its rotation from the FK knee control, which I forgot to name. And this is the top of the knee, which the animator doesn't have direct control of, except maybe to tweak things. It simply inherits its rotation from the thigh. Together, these two control a set of pivots. Yeah, anyways, um, what's going on here is on the back of the pivot, we have a, joint, uh, a bone that will only rotate backwards. And on the front of the pivot, we have a bone that will only rotate forwards. The forwards ro rotating bone is a child of the backward rotating bone. And in the center, we have a child of the forward rotating bone. And the way that we're doing that here is this one has a transformation constraint to the rotation source in the middle from negative 180 degrees to zero degrees. So it will only take the negative rotation. And this one has a transformation constraint from zero to 180. 
so it will only take the positive rotation. Now everything that is underneath the knee is in one way or another a child of this bone right here. So the combination of the rotation of the pivot points gives us our shin's rotation. And I've got a bone right here that copies right in the middle that sets the location of the deformation bones that define the knee. Let's take a look at them, shall we? We have our pelvis, which is the parent of the entire rig. We have our thigh bone, which is a parent of the knee. We have our knee deformation bones, which are children of the knee center, which uh, I can't move around freely, but you can see how they follow it. And we have one for each of the tendons on the side of the leg. You probably don't need to do that. I probably didn't need to do that. And we have one for the kneecap. And I made these B-bones because I think it looks nicer when they deform. See, it's, it's a lot better. Um, but this one looks better not as a B-bone. So I turned off all its B-bone settings. And we have our shin deformed bone, and of course the foot and the heel. And I'm going to get to this guy in a second. Anyways, the center bone... Uh, there we go. The center bone wants to stay exactly in the middle so that the kneecap is in the right place, and so that the crease on the back of the knee stays in the right place too. And the way that works is the center of the pivot holds the bone roll setters, which set the roll of the bone. They're the start and the end handle. Because the B-bone is essentially a bezier spline, and these are the knots at the end of the bezier spline. Great. Now the center control simply copies the location halfway between the head and the tail along the B-bone of the B-bone rail. That gets the head in the right place. Now in order to get the tail in the right place, we need to stretch to the center, halfway between the head and the tail, along the B-bone of the front rail. Now it always stays in the center and it always points in the right direction. Awesome. And we didn't have to do any math to make it happen. In addition, you can use a driver or a constraint or whatever to tweak this section if you want to. I think it makes the deformation look just a little bit better, but you don't have to do that. And I'm going to make this rig available to download if you want to poke around it and, and, and see how I did that. Now I promised you I'd get back to this guy right here. What this bone does is, as the name says, it preserves the length of the shin. So, we just have the shin bone simply copy from the center of the pivot point. The, uh, the knee adds some length to the leg, which is problematic because it ends up making the foot a lot longer than it, a lot higher up than it should be when you bend it backwards. It makes the leg longer than, than it really is. And it also makes it hard for IK joints to, uh, to properly work with the rig. So let's kill two birds with one stone and simply use a stretch two. And now this will be the right length relative to the front of the knee. The, the original location of the knee before the hinge joint moved the knee forward. 
So this part gets longer and this part gets shorter and the length is correct in the end. And the way this works is this is a child of the center of the pivot, but it copies its location to the thigh bone. Uh, and this is just a stretch too. Very simple. Now I've also made the rig work in IK just as a proof of concept to show you it can be done. And um, I'll leave a description in the documentation to the rig that explains how I did that. I don't want to go into too much detail uh, just here because you know, you know how to make an IKFK switch. And finally, we can see that because all of the constraints operate in local space, um, except for the location constraints, that all the rotation and scale constraints operate in local space. So we can rotate, move, scale the rig, even with non-uniform scale, and it still behaves, well, more correctly than we really expected it to anyways. <laughs> Of course, there's no keyframes. And that's the rig. And this has been the first part of Riggy Bits number one. In the second part, I will do a step by step demonstration of how to create the rig. And in case you're wondering why, why I'm doing it that way, since this is the first video in the series, I'll just go ahead and explain that. It's because some of you just want the information right now and you don't want to waste your time with a tutorial, right? Because you already know how to make this stuff. You just want to find out how it works. So that's what this particular video is supposed to be. It's just supposed to give you ideas. And if you're able to figure it out, then just figure it out on your own. And the second video is if you don't care about the theory behind it and you just want to do it, then uh, it's a step-by-step explanation. So the goal is to save you time so you don't have to sit through a 40 minute video. You can just watch one 20 minute video of your choosing. But please watch them both and like them both and comment on both of them and subscribe to both of them because I need you.